DJ Jazzy John. Flashback! Look what has landed on our piazza. Now, Matt, you probably can't see this. It's a red arrows mm. hawk. You'd absolutely love it. And uh, later we'll be talking to squadron leader Martin Pert and flight lieutenant John Bond, also known as Pertie and Bondy. They're the pilots behind a brand new manoeuvre which they've recently revealed exclusively on The One Show. Uh, in a second, Chris and I are going to head outside to meet the Red Arrows pilot. Now, recently they created a brand new manoeuvre and they invited The One Show to film it as they practised for the first time, didn't they, Matt? Yeah, they did. And they're also asking uh, you wonderful viewers for help as well, because they want you to name their brand new manoeuvre. Um, now, to help you out, of course, you've got to see this manoeuvre. So Helen Fospero was at RAF Scampton in Lincolnshire. When it comes to great British air bases, RAF Scampton is up with the best of them. Set in Lincolnshire, the base was home to the legendary Dambusters and Vulcan bombers, but now it's more famous as the home of the Red Arrows. They're known for their aerial formations, but one of the most difficult moves is when two jets fly head-on towards each other at breakneck speeds. Today is the first day that the team are practising their new manoeuvre in its full glory, and we are going to be the first to see it. The pilots are called the Reds, but one of the most crucial parts of the unit is known as the Blues, the 110 strong engineers and support staff. Natalie heads up part of the Blues and is responsible for making sure the Hawks take off and fly safely. Natalie, these jets are more than 30 years old mm -hmm. and yet the things the pilots are expecting them to do out there are phenomenal, aren't they? Yes. Obviously, when you see them flying like speed, you know deep down if, if something's gone wrong, it's your responsibility, which isn't an option. It isn't an option. No. But how does that feel? The pressure can be intense. If someone's not happy with something, you stop and you, you reassess it. If you thought too hard, I guess you'd never sleep at night, would oh, you? Well. <laughs> <laughs> I'd never come to work. No, you wouldn't. So, Callum, just tell me about um, the dye and how it gets into the aircraft. If you don't fill the pod properly, there's going to be not enough smoke for the display and it's going to be a disappointed crowd. There's no gauges, there's no way of telling, apart from listening to the, to the dye filling in the pod. There's a safety aspect for them flying, isn't yeah. there, with the smoke? How does that work? When they all break off, Red One will put his smoke on and can now follow him to wherever, they, wherever he is. It makes it a lot easier to see a little aircraft in the sky. It's not just the attention to detail maintaining the planes that's important, the pilots have to focus on every detail of their flight plan too. To even be considered for the Red Arrows, each pilot must have at least 1,500 hours of fast jet flying, have completed a frontline tour of duty and have nerves of steel. The two pilots performing this new manoeuvre are Red 6 and 7, aka Bondi and Gregor. Bondi, first of all, tell me how you came up with the idea for this new manoeuvre. We just thought we'd amalgamate two manoeuvres, double rolls and vice versa. The initial part of the manoeuvre is a barrel roll, effectively. So we roll upside down, only about 500 feet above the ground, and you pull down towards the ground, inverted at 150 feet. Once we've completed that roll, it's my job to miss him that close enough to make it look like we're in the same bit of sky. And what are your top speeds when you're flying this new manoeuvre? So I have a closing speed of around 700 miles an hour. What's a closing speed? The combined speed of, of us pointing towards each other. Do you feel the pressure? When you do your first show in the summer in front of thousands and thousands of people, you've got to get it right. There's, there's no way you can get it wrong. It's time to put theory into practice. And with the all clear from air traffic control, Red 6 and 7 are ready for a trial run. Squadron leader Martin Pert, or Red One, is the leader of the Red Arrows. It's his voice and intonation which the other pilots rely on during their routines. From the readings you've got from there, Pert, what's it going to be like up there? Yeah, it's going to be a significant challenge for the guys today. There's a really quite a strong breeze from the west. These aircraft are getting on a little bit, but they're perfect for the role that we fly them for. We're really stressing them to, to their absolute maximum. There's a lot for these pilots to learn from these practice sessions. So, Bundy, how was that? Wow. That was good. It's a bit breezy up there. 
just adds a little bit of uh, extra complexity to the manoeuvre. The post-flight briefing involves examining footage shot by their videographers. All this feedback is vital when it comes to this high-speed manoeuvre. Are you feeling good about it and that you're, you're on target with where you want to be at this stage? It's good to see the, the sort of final product from, from the initial paper drawings. Great today to, to get out there with smoke. You know, the, the guys downstairs did, did an amazing job to get that ready for us. What are you going to take away from today? We're going to work on just the uh, coloured smoke change. At the moment, it's not quite there. The timing's um, just a little bit awry. Gregor? It's got to be the fudge for me, so the fudge is me making it look like I'm in the same bit of sky as Red 6. I could be too high or too low. I want to make it look like I'm in the perfect place every time. With a small gap in the weather, it's now time to perform their new manoeuvre at full throttle. Yes, I break. Roll down that the top. That's fantastic. Felt well, like uh, another decent run, I've got no choice. The seven match uh, felt like a good one. You can't really ask for more perfect to shape than what you're seeing above you. Well, Pertie and Bondi join us now. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank Thanks you. for coming yeah. in. Thanks because I know you did debate it for a long time, should we, shouldn't we? But you've come, you've driven here, you haven't taken public transport. And I tell you what, it does lift morale a bit, I think, you know, to see items like this and to see you in the flesh and have a chat about yeah. something else for five minutes. Thank you. Um, so that was an amazing manoeuvre there. How did you come up with that then, Bondi? Well, we have a very quick turnaround between display season. So I had about two weeks of leave. Uh, sitting on a sun lounger in sunnier climes. Very nice. <laughs> and uh, there were two manoeuvres that I really liked flying last year, double rolls and vice versa, and I thought a way of mixing them up, something a little bit different. Um, so initial paper drawings, and then uh, I got to go and practice it on my own when I got back to, to the UK. Then eventually added Gregor Red 7, and uh, got the approval of the boss and the hierarchy to us to, uh, to be able to put it into this year's display. And while you were on your sun lounger, you came up with a manoeuvre, but not the name. So you've been asking for help with this. We have. You? We need a name for it. So we'd, we'd really like to sort of dig out to, to our fans and, and those who watch us and, and sort of contact us via our social media channels to come up with a name for us. Lovely. And, you know, it'd be really great if we could see this move in some of your displays of the summer. But, of course, mm. current climate, we don't know what's going to happen. But you are using it in training in any way so it's not going to waste is it for us at the moment we are absolutely training as normal it's not going to waste and we have rehearsed it as you've seen on the film that was yeah. was produced about a month ago where it goes from here we just don't know we're just being as adaptable as everyone else at the moment and hopefully at some point this summer we'll be able to show it off brilliant and you went to the states as ambassadors i mean look at this chris this footage um, if we can see the first one where you flew over golden gate in san francisco oh, nice. isn't that. that brilliant that's incredible views isn't it? yeah wonderful and then yeah. you weren't only there you went to manhattan as well i think and probably there you are we can see that that's now. us down the hudson yep good memories oh my goodness where's the favorite place for you that you've flown then Believe it or not, it's actually over here, over the city. It's flying yeah. over the Queen, over Buckingham Palace on the Queen's birthday fly past or any big event is an absolute highlight, especially for me as the leader, because I just get an absolutely yeah. perfect view of the mall. And I tell you what, while everybody is at home self-isolating, if it comes to that, if you could just fly past and everybody be in their gardens, wouldn't that be wonderful that be to see? Maybe with a bit of disinfectant coming out of that. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, thank you both. It's really thank good you. to see you. Thanks for taking the decision to come in. Thank I really you. appreciate thank it. Uh, and thanks to everyone involved in getting that plane on our, t on our piazza. Oh, it was a right fuss. <laughs> if you want to see how they did it, head over to our Instagram page at BBC The One Show. You can see it all there. The DJ Jazzy Jive. Flashback!